Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a classic horror film, a classic horror story. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. Elisa, a junior doctor, is pregnant out of wedlock, but her irresponsible boyfriend disappears. After much considerations, Elisa decides to visit her parents to get an abortion at the behest of her controlling mother. So she books carpooling and joins four strangers in a rideshare camper bound for southern Italy. The driver Fabrizio is a goofball local who owns the camper and makes vlogs of his travels. The passengers include a loving foreign couple named Boyfriend and Girlfriend, who are on their way to a friend's wedding, and a sullen middle-aged man named Ricardo, who claims to be a doctor. Elisa is the fifth one on board, and she looks rather shy before the camera. Fabrizio has prepared beer for the passengers, and Boyfriend helps to distribute them. At first, Elisa refuses to drink due to her pregnancy, but in the end, she joins them in drinking. On their journey, a billboard has caught Elisa's attention. Strangely, the eyes of the ambassador have all been masked. This leads to a discussion of the mafia among the five persons. The mafia is one of the main causes of crime in the region, and they are obviously involved in the disappearance of various residents. While they are talking, Elisa begins to puke, so Fabrizio stops the car for her to alight. Since no one knows she is pregnant, they simply think she has some motion sickness. After that, Boyfriend who is drunk, insists on driving the camper. No one approves his plan. But Boyfriend sticks himself to the driver's seat and pushes his way through. As it is a remote area, the rest finally allows him to take over the driving duties. Night falls, only Fabrizio and Boyfriend stay awake in the car, and they are actively engaged in conversations. Fabrizio reveals that he is a film school student, and has been suffering hearing loss as a result of violence. Shortly after, they pass by a signboard that says, watch out for the deer. They find an animal lying ahead. Fabrizio swerves out of the way, as soon as he sees the animal on the road, and crashes the camper into a tree. When the five return to consciousness in the morning, Mark's leg is broken. Doctor treats his wounds and resets his leg. Elisa tries to call an ambulance, only to find the region without any cell reception. They want to ask for help on the road, but there is apparently no roadway in sight. No one knows why they end up in such a place, because the car accident last night was taken place on the road. Now the road they were traveling on has disappeared, and there is only a dense, impenetrable forest and a wooden house in the middle of a clearing. To make it more creepy, they also find a pole with six lamps surrounding a loudspeaker. They decide to enlist the help of the house owner. Girlfriend peeks through the glass window of the house and discovers a blood-stained table. Since no one answers the door, they have to return to the camper. Fabrizio and boyfriend blame each other for the car crash. No matter what, they have arrived at a bizarre location, which is definitely inaccessible by car. After they wonder what has happened, Fabrizio and Dr. Venture into the forest to find ways to leave this place. Having grown up here, Fabrizio is more familiar with the surroundings. He suggests that they should head to the south. On the camper, Lisa attempts to contact her mother, but she cannot send any messages. Girlfriend comes over to chat with her and shares her candid videos of the couple. In such a dire situation, bonds are forged between the strangers, because they could only count on each other now. While walking in the forest, Fabrizio recalls a movie he has watched before. It is about a group of people spending their time as usual, without realizing they are thrown into hell. And they are taken aback by the eerie altar set up in front of them. Three scarecrows draped in red cloth, stand on a branch, with bloody pig heads underneath, and a sign that reads, Three Nights of Glory. Looks like a ritual of some sort of cult. Fabrizio and Doctor do not dare to venture further, so they detour. Back to the car, Elisa is sharp to find the door of the wooden house swung open. As the couple fall asleep, Elisa alone goes out to check. She first asks if anyone is in the house, but no one responds. As Elisa observes, the seemingly abandoned house is filled with photos of people in animal masks. Suddenly, a weird sound breaks the dooming silence. Elisa traces the sound to a room with many candles lit up, and then Fabrizio unfolds the legend of Osso, Mastrasso, and Carcagnasso. As recorded on the ritualistic mural, the three deities consist of the blind, the deaf, and the mute. A long time ago, the village was stricken by famine, and many villagers were starved to death. The Three Knights of Glory promises to save the villagers, on the condition of them offering eyes, ears, and tongues for sacrifice, rather than for massage. Ever since then, such a ritual has been passing down for generations to come. Fabrizio and Doctor are reminded of the five pig heads on the altar, which might correspond to the five of them. Terrified, they decide to spend the night away from the house, and sleep in the car. 
boyfriend begins to blame himself for the inconveniences that he has brought to the other passengers on board. Fabrizio analyzes what they are going through, is very similar to the plot of horror movies. And then Fabrizio walks into the jungle to pee, but he is scared off by two men wearing masks. While Fabrizio is away, a light is switched on from the house. Armed with torch lights, girlfriend and Elisa again leave the camper to check it out. The bold and courageous girlfriend first pulls down a ladder, and climbs up to the second floor. At this time Fabrizio returns to the car, and cautions everyone that they are not alone in the woods. Doctor then abandons the injured boyfriend, and flees to the wooden house along with Fabrizio. Together, the four of them spot a mute girl trapped in a glass enclosure, and a massage tongue soaked in the water beside her. According to legend, this poor girl must be one of the sacrifices chosen by the villagers. All of a sudden, the red alert of the ritual is activated outside. Girlfriend wants to rescue boyfriend, but she is stopped by Doctor and Fabrizio. Shortly after, three men in strange costumes drag boyfriend into the house and ties him up onto the table. With the ritual music turned on, the abuser breaks boyfriend's leg with a hammer. The three bandits are no one other than the three knights of glory. And then they take out a scary torturing tool, aiming to gauge out boyfriend's ice. When the ritual comes to an end, the three killers leave the house. The next day, they rescue Mute, and girlfriend is drowning in grief. The bloodstains and the props left on the table, remind them that it is real and they are doomed. So they decide to flee the car, before they are captured by the cult leaders. Crossing the woods, they arrive at an abandoned car park, and realize they are not the first victims. It is mysterious where the previous travelers are, and what they are doing. At this time, Doctor points his finger at Girlfriend, saying that their sufferings have to do with Boyfriend's reckless behaviors. Girlfriend criticizes Doctor for running away without taking care of Boyfriend. She even doubts the true identity of Doctor, for normally, doctors do not opt for carpooling. While they are in a fierce argument, Mute enters a car to touch her notebook. Elisa asks her if she knows the way out of the woods, and Mute writes down that it is not a forest. Before Elisa could fully fathom her answer, the alarm for ritual rings once again. Based on last night's experience, they suppose that someone needs to be killed, so they quickly flee away from the car park. Despite them making efforts to exit the woods, they are led back to the wooden house. This time round, even their trailer is gone without a trace. What's left behind is only a bottle of beer. They have no choice but to spend the night at the wooden house. As a form of stress management, everyone takes turns drinking the beer, and reveal their own backgrounds. Doctor confesses that he is penalized for killing a patient, and then he had a fight with his wife before he carpooled away from home. Fabrizio admits that he committed murder when others accuse him of being a mafia. Elisa says that her parents sold their house in order to afford her medicine course, but now she is going for an abortion. The heartfelt sharing session has eased their tensions, and they soon fall asleep. At midnight, the alarm for sacrifices sounded, and red light filtrates the whole house. Elisa is awakened to find all the lamps on the pole are lightened up. A stage appears out of thin air, with girlfriend, mute, and doctor tied up onto respective stake. A flock of villagers wearing masks are staring at Elisa, who is paralyzed. Fabrizio dashes out to pull helpless Elisa into the house and shuts the door. Fortunately, the villagers just turn to the stage as the appointed time comes. After the winged horse steps its feet, the ceremony begins. The man on stage first says the incantation. With burning hot knives, the blind knight gauges out girlfriend's eyes, and the deaf knight cuts off doctor's ears. Then they shake the bells, offer the shattered parts to the scarecrow high above, and slay girlfriend and doctor. The sight of such a bloody scene sends shivers down Elisa's spine, and she breaks down in tears. She is confused about how and why girlfriend and doctor are captured, without her noticing any signs. Given that they cuddle together in the room, she should have known it when they are taken. To calm her down, Fabrizio gives Elisa a comforting hug. In search of an answer, Elisa smells the beer bottle and suspects that they are drugged. Fabrizio hugs her and says that Elisa is having hallucinations now. Elisa almost accepts what he says, but she soon hears the sound coming from Fabrizio's ear. She reaches out to grabs away his device and hears that someone is calling Fabrizio's name and instructs him to take Elisa to a certain place. It turns out that what Fabrizio wears is not any hearing aid, but a blue tooth earpiece. Exposed, Fabrizio begins to curse at Elisa for ruining his perfect plan and orders to have Elisa taken away from the wooden house. Badly beaten and her hand nailed to a wheelchair, she is brought to an outdoor ceremony held by the villagers in the mayor's presence. Elisa cries out for help, 
but everyone is enjoying the blind boy singing praise to the honorable knights. When they toast for the glory of the knights, Elisa bursts into tears. As the villagers respond to her cries, the mayor angrily pounds the table and slaps everyone down. Elisa comes to learn that the three knights are the origin of the mafia, and the mayor is associated with the sect members. The mayor obtains the residents' support through the ritual, and consolidates her power through the mafias. She claims that if Elisa does not die, they will be deprived of food. At this time, a police car drives in, and Elisa pleads for help. To her dismay, the mayor boards the police car. In the face of Elisa's despair, the sect members continue to enjoy their meals, caring nothing about the life and death of others. Elisa is then brought to a control room, which is surrounded by big screens. She realizes that all the events she faced are recorded by hidden cameras, and a production team is overseeing everything. Even the dead animal which causes the car accident is taped. Fabrizio shows up on the screen, saying that he is directing an amateur snuff movie, trying to create classic horror story. Hearing that he is the man behind all the horrors, Elisa is filled with hatred and angst. Fabrizio is pissed off that Elisa destroys his perfect plan, so he intends to change the script and kills Elisa in other ways. However, Elisa is no longer willing to be pushed around. She frees herself from the mooring, and her blood flows profusely. After bandaging herself, she leaves the cockpit to find Mute. The props lying around indicate that she is in the camp of the film's production team. Elisa notices a woman's dress outside a tent. She enters the tent to find the face masks of the knights and cameras. Unexpectedly, she hears Fabrizio screaming in a fury in his own camper. He is driven mad at the failure of his snuff film. As Elisa peeks at him through the window, she finds Mute also present in the trailer. Fabrizio and Mute quarrel with one another, and Mute slaps him. And then Mute begins to wear makeup like the poor Mute girl, getting ready for the next recording. Elisa is stricken by the fact that Mute is an actress hired by Fabrizio to perform the farce. She is not any victim, but accomplice in the crime. Feeling cheated and betrayed, Elisa makes up her mind to avenge. As soon as Mute opens the door of the car, Elisa shoots her dead. As Elisa's gun is somehow stuck, Fabrizio walks out of the cabin to approach her. Elisa does not relent, but fires at him right in his leg. Fabrizio collapses, succumbed to his wound, and shouts out for help. Elisa turns the camera towards Fabrizio and points the gun at him. Fabrizio begs her to spare his life, but Elisa says this is nothing but a film. Having said that, she pulls the trigger to wipe out the evil mastermind. Facing the camera, Elisa removes her mask and comments, this is your end. Elisa wanders in the forest with a gun and runs into a boy. Following the boy, she passes through iron fences with a signboard, which says illegal armed surveillance is prohibited in the military zone. Elisa now understands Fabrizio is able to commit such lawlessness because he makes the region a fake military zone. They have finally arrived at a beach, where everyone taking their leisure time is looking at her in bewilderment. As Elisa walks along the beach, they start to film her with their cell phones. Elisa is reminded of her phone and finds that reception is resumed. The movie ends with Elisa diving into the sea. In a post credit scene, Fabrizio's snuff film is posted online, and the user evaluates the movie negatively. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Peace out.